Hi, my name is Liv and I make things. In last week's video, I got to try my hand at using some glow-in-the-dark paint, and it was so much fun to work with that I wanted to use it again this week. Since it's still winter, it was a little too cold for me to cover myself in paint and run around outside. So instead, I decided to look at what games were coming out this week for a little bit of inspiration. Of course, since I love Nintendo, the first thing that came to mind was Majora's Mask that's coming out today on Nintendo Switch Online. I already had a small version of Majora's Mask made, along with a number of other masks from the game, but this one didn't glow in the dark, and it was also pretty small. So I decided I would make a much larger one. It wouldn't be the size of, say, someone's face, but it would still be bigger than the little guy that I already had. I sketched out a version of the mask on some scrap paper, just so I would get the proportions right whenever I started sculpting. I started like I always do with a tinfoil base. For this mask, after I bake it, I wanted it to be hollow on the inside, so this tinfoil isn't going to be covered on both sides, just on the front. One horrifically awful transition later, and we have our base that we can add more clay onto. All of this tinfoil is going to be torn out after I bake it, so I can keep it and use it for later projects. I made some square clay snakes and attached them to the top of the mask. Next, I used one of my paddle tools to press down the seams so that they were seamless. The top of the mask has these six sort of ventilation slits, so I press them in using one of my ball stylus tools. Next thing I did was add on the eyes. These are basically just two Circles of clay that I squished down into quasi-pancake half-circle thingies and then stuck them onto the front, and I pressed down the seams of them with my tiny spoon. I went in with one of my silicone paint brushes to smooth out the sides even more. This really wasn't necessary because I'm gonna end up covering the edges of these eyes with more square clay snakes. Once again, I use my tiny spoon to sploosh down the sides. I again made more square clay snakes to lay down on the face as more of the raised detailing of the mask. At this point, I really started to feel like the mask was starting to come together. On the forehead of the mask, there are a number of tiny holes. There are six on the forehead, two around the nose, and then eight where the mouth would be. The next thing to do was to add the spikes onto the sides of the helmet. I made a bunch of clay cones, made sure that they were all around the same size, then I stuck two to the top of the head, I pressed down the seams with one of my paddle tools, and then I put four along each side of the face. Each of the spikes got some wood grain texture to it. Whenever I was looking at other artists making Majora's Mask, for some reason they decided to put wood grain on the front of the mask as well as the spikes, which I found to be kind of odd because Majora's Mask isn't made from wood, it's made from the remains of a god. So I decided to just texture the face with a balled up piece of tin foil. This creates a sort of like blotchy effect. Once the texturizing of the mask is done, I get to put it in the oven and then start tearing out the tin foil insides. 
I decided to do this because I didn't want the mask to be very heavy. I wanted to be able to hang it on my wall, and it didn't really need to be completely opaque. I was actually very surprised at the amount of moisture that was between the tinfoil and the clay. I guess clay has a tendency to sweat in the oven whenever it's cooked. After I got the tin foil out, I primed the front of the mask, and I didn't bother priming the inside part because I wasn't going to paint it anyways since it'll be facing the wall. I started off by painting the top part of the mask in a bright orange. I also made sure to paint the edges of the mask, even though they won't be seen because I'll also be facing the wall, I just felt like it would be nice for the color to go all the way around the sides. Next thing I painted was a deep purple that covers most of the front of the mask. Later on, I went back in with some medium tone purple, and I also dry brushed on some light purple just to add some wear and tear. Next, I painted on the red, which in real life is a deep crimson, but for some reason was showing up as more of an orange here. I swear it's red though. I filled out all of the slats on the top part of the head with some black, and I also filled in all the holes that I made along the front of the mask. Similar to what I did with the purple, I decided to ageify the red part of the mask a little bit by blotting on some darker reds, as well as some lighter red dry brushing. The eyes on this mask are going to be the part that glow, but I wanted to do a base layer of the color first, just to make sure that it was going to be nice and opaque whenever it was done. So I added some red around the very edges of the eye, and then blended in oranges, and then gradually moved to yellow closer to the center. Since I was going to paint over this later, I could afford to be pretty messy with it. The next thing I painted on was the green gradient part of the mask. Basically, I started with some emerald green, added in some sap green, and then slowly added in white. Finally, after messily painting all of the main colors of the mask, I get to go in with some black and paint over those raised pieces of clay. Next thing to paint on was the white lines on the front of the mask. I mixed some white with a little bit of gray and just kind of roughly painted them on. I knew later on I was going to be going back over them with more red to kind of make it look like they had chipped off a little bit. So again, I could afford to be pretty messy with this. This mask was pretty fun to make overall. Thankfully, since I had already made one in the past, I already had muscle memory for the sculpting and the painting portion of it. After working on Xant last week, which took me over 20 hours, it was nice to have something that took less than 10. Also, the design of Majora's Mask is pretty cool, so it's always fun to make a bigger version of the small one that I already had. I painted the white lines onto the purple part of the mask the same way that I did with the red and painted over it later on with some purple. Next thing I painted on was the three yellow triangles on each side of the forehead of the mask. I had to do about two to three coats for these, depending how bright I wanted the color to be. All of the spikes got multiple coats of yellow as base. Again, with yellow paint, I find that it's very sheer whenever I paint it on, so I always have to do at least three coats. 
The second spike on each side of the face gets a little bit of an orange gradient on the ends. I do this by putting down multiple layers of orange, and then at the very tip later on I end up putting some vermilion red. The next spike gets the same treatment but with green. I decided to add some yellow ochre to the base of the top spikes, just because I thought it would add some nice dimension. The spike at the bottom also gets the same treatment with some blue. With all of the regular painting done, I finally get to move on to the very fun, 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 glow-in-the-dark portion of painting. I have this glow-in-the-dark powder that starts off orange, and whenever it glows, it turns into a gold, which is going to be perfect for Majora's eyes. I mix some matte medium, as well as some of the glow-in-the-dark powder, into some red paint, and painted the very edges of the eyes. Then I added the same mix to some orange paint, as well as some yellow, and painted over the same gradient that I already had for the eyes. One thing that I will say that kind of sucks about this glow-in-the-dark powder is it causes the paint to become very granular. So whenever I'm painting onto these eyes, it kind of feels like I'm painting on sandpaper. Next thing I painted on was the green irises. I mixed the same glow-in-the-dark powder with some green paint, and then I surrounded the outside part of the irises in emerald green. The last thing I have to do to finish off this mask is plop down the two black pupils. I think now all that's left to do is get on to the final reveal. It was so nice to have a less demanding project for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed watching, and I hope that these glowing eyes don't give you nightmares, because they're pretty creepy, not gonna lie. <laughs> Anyways, like the video if you liked it, and subscribe if you want to see more. Bye!